Anyway, this isn't going to be a technical talk at all. This is about the journey that Ohio State has had and sort of my journey in the last 15 years of my career, because I'll be, it'll be 30 years July 5th at Ohio State University. And just a little bit about that is I was uh, head of the student information system before I got into enterprise architecture. And with all of that, that's the mainframe. When I was two years old, I started doing that with the green screen that was mentioned the other day. I worked on those, typed on the little green um, screens, entering degrees and things as a student worker, and then I became full-time. Then I took over the student uh, system for a number of years, and then we went to PeopleSoft, and I was like, I'm not doing that. What's my next career? Just a little bit about Ohio State. One of the largest universities in um, the US. These are our numbers, 65,000 students plus, and then there's 53,000 um, faculty and staff. Um, some of the staff sitting right there. Anyway, um, we have also non-employees, and what those are, are contingent workers, consultants, things that come on and get access to our systems, and intermittent and seasonal workers, for example, working in the stadiums for the football games, people that come on, ushers, and everything like that. So a large population, and there's many more, because we have non-credit courses, so there's many more people just taking like Swift programming and things like that. They're, they're not necessarily OSU folks, but they're part of the organization. My service areas. As I mentioned, I was head of SIS, and then I started um, focusing on integration. And that's why I said my career sort of dovetailed with our interaction with WSO2 because in 2011, that's when I became architect. I figured out what I wanted to do after a year leaving student, and integration was the focus. Enterprise architecture, I started focusing on that and the different pillars. And then data engineer, engineering group, I just inherited, I think, two, a year ago, two years ago. And so now I have all those facets under one umbrella. And that's the ideas group. You see the I, D, E, A, ideas, services. So beginning, 2010, 2015. Some of the folks that, that were up here earlier said they started with WSO2 2005. And then um, I was reading Apache things. I was reading about Apache synapses and all this kind of stuff. Well, in 2010, needed to solve the problem of the hairball integration, spaghetti, all that kind of stuff. So that's the beginning, and let's get into that. I mentioned yesterday on the panel, small wins. You remember that, Chris? That's how you have to get folks engaged in doing the integrations, releasing their data. You have to convince the data stewards to allow folks to get access to that information. So it's a lot of socializing and walking around and talking to different departments and things like that. It's not really a technical problem. It is engagement. But the small wins, we've had uh, web services in real time for uh, grades, enrollment, and those services end up powering our OSU mobile app. And we released our mobile app and. July 2011, and that is what sent that application skyrocketed, all students using, faculty using, and now it's one of our biggest assets for the university. Everybody uses it, and they had to have a whole team support it after that. But just in the integration space, these are these small wins. This is very easy to do, but it was a big impact. Another is the faculty grade posting. When we went to PeopleSoft, they were going to revert to Excel uploading grades for faculty. We had already doing 
real-time web, web services and grade posting via the mainframe, but we were still doing it in real time. Why would we go backwards? So we created web services in PeopleSoft to do that. Our university library, they were doing their patron records, and this is a story about me, they were doing their patron records in batch. Well, I was a student at Ohio State, and during that time, I worked for LAIR, which is a laboratory of artificial intelligence research. And I went to the library, checked out a book for the professor I was working with. That was three years like, into my undergrad career. Well, I get to work for Ohio State full time. Two years into my employment, I'm getting a notice on my financial statement because I have a hold. Library said I checked out the book and never returned it. <laughs> I'm an employee of Ohio State and they couldn't find me. I was right upstairs. <laughs> so that, that explains the problem of real-time in, information flow, right? They were doing batches or monthly or whatever, so they weren't getting my records updated. So that was a challenge that I wanted to take on, and that's why I really got into the integration, because it was personal. And then we built other services, and we kept on growing the number of services to 100 or so kind of integrations, because we were getting rid of the um, hairball problem. Start looking into SOA, wanted to find better and efficient ways to uh, do the systems. So the, Journey begins. How many of you know of the spaghetti and hairball problem? You familiar with that? Well, this is the real picture. I was asked by the CIO to tell, me, tell her how ugly our integrations were. These were all file, mostly file integrations, FTP, SFTP. And one of those, you can't see it if you had the Visio. Zoom in, there's 99 different customers on one of those files. Send in the same data. Why would you do that? And that has now become one of our biggest services, which is the person service, right? They were getting email, first name, last name. Another person, email, first name, last name, phone number. Those were the different permutations of that batch job. And then you can see for our student system, HR, and finance, all the different integrations that were out there. So that's a problem. So I wanted to try to reduce it, and the boss I had at that time was all for us looking at different solutions like um, ESVs and things like that. Real picture. The date, I don't know if you can read it, 5, 9, 10. That's when I drew that picture. I was looking and researching ESBs, and this, actually, 2011, WSO2, the other M word. <laughs> Oracle and all the other competition at that time. And at that time, MuleSoft was open source. So I was looking, comparing open source to commercial. This is the actual paper I sent to my boss and then socialized and we picked WSO2, well I did, in that I liked how easy it was to install. I could do it on my own laptop. I connected to my own SQL Server backend because you can connect to multiple databases. And the end result, my boss said, just try it, just do it, and I did it underground. And then eventually I had to build the team back up because I left student, I had 23 people then, now I'm just by myself. So you find those people interested in the type of work, being able to develop, have the acumen, the desire to do this type of work, and to play with an open source tool. And some of the colleagues right here started with me back then. So challenges, though. Lack of support, varying levels of the organization. People fear what they don't understand. I had one colleague that was in a department say, this is Star Wars hard. 
after hearing, actually, a Zoom or WebEx with Nuwan Bandera demoing um, WSO2. He said, Star Wars hard, we'll never do it, you'll never do it. Fine, you're off my list. <laughs> Many developers did low-code solutions, and like you saw in the hairball or the actual picture of the integrations, they did the easiest solution, and that's the file base. That's what they knew, that's what they can do quickly, but it's inefficient, it wasn't real-time, things like that. And then the ERP systems um, became part of our uh, system, and believe it or not, implementing those things. Some of the systems, while they're great at doing the business part of the ERP, integration process, getting data out, pushing data in, that's the most difficult part of doing those systems. And we've been through two major changes, a couple major changes with PeopleSoft, but that is the difficulty. But alas, we have our integration platform, we had WSO2, we're running this in the background, nobody knows we're doing it. So, accomplishments. Created an EIP DevOps team, and that was made of a couple of my guys, our middleware, remember the word middleware team, um, networking, and together we implemented WSO2. We started in November of 2014, went live June 2015 with then ESB, governance reg, we had all the products, then identity server, and things like that. But the real win was when our finance system was going to be upgraded, they wanted to reduce the users in the system because of regulations. Well, here's our opportunity to introduce WSO2 and the integrations in the store and the ESB and things like that. So we made everyone convert off of the direct point-to-point -point services to PeopleSoft and introduced our platform. And that's a huge win, small impact, huge, or small win, huge impact. We also have the luxury of having our shibboleth, one of the people part of Internet 2, as part of our staff. So we were able to use an identity server and integrate that right then. So our consoles and everything, we're just using the web authentication that we've been using all over the campus. We wanted to reduce direct database access and then prepare for the Workday project. First, the Workday project was going to be for finance only, and then they were like, we're going to tackle HR, we're going to tackle student, and convert you off of PeopleSoft. Crap. Anyway, um, long story short, I said Workday and PeopleSoft and things like that, great for the business, but it's in a bubble getting the integrations out, that's the struggle. And as preparing our system, we wanted to go from tier one, which we were behind the scenes anyway, to tier zero and make it available for every system that was doing integrations that served integrations out to our customers. So, present day, or present period, 2017. Attended WSO2 Con, and I think it was, Ballerina was introduced there. Maybe not a big launch, but we were there. We started with it immediately. So we adopted that. We created one of our, or changed one of our services that was a data service into a Ballerina. We also were looking at Kubernetes, and I had happened to look, uh, meet a guy from Google, and they demonstrated Kubernetes, and then at the same time, WSO2, I think it was a 10-year, maybe, presentation I saw at the end of the year, introducing, we're going to do Kubernetes. We're going to create a strategy and move our VMs 
to Kubernetes, and that's what we did. And we started that project 2017, went live February 2018, because I can remember that date because <laughs> Mr. Jim in the audience, that's when he was having a kid. And we went live while he was out, and hence the do-it-yourself Kubernetes. Uh, <laughs> you've learned your lessons from those. But anyway, it was a win, and that's what we've been running on ever since. And we had the WSO2 components, and WSO2 was still starting into that cloud mode. So we're sort of growing along with them. Started doing more road shows, more conferences, and things like that, just sharing, sharing across the educational industry and others. Um, so that was great. We were getting out there, and by that, the leadership started to take notice. And then it was like, we need insurance. Insurance, because if we get hit, who's going to run the system? Enter the support from WSO2 and the contract. And it's been the support and everything has been great. 2019, as I said, the workday stuff is hard. We had to train the workday folks in how to do web service. Even I think it was 30 people and Jerry and I were <laughs> standing in front. How many people have done web services? And there's 30 people in the room. Three. So in addition to maintaining our platform, right, in addition to doing the major services, we had to train 30 people about integrations from day one. What is REST? What is SOAP? And then go through the whole thing. And then WSO2, Integration, uh, integration Studio, we used that. We trained them. And now they're one of the, our biggest users of the tool because we have a sandbox specifically made for them. But they're doing it. They're serving their integrations to us. Student Capstone, I mentioned that in the panel yesterday. We had three engineering students graduating. I think it was the end of December 2019, maybe 20. Um, and they just said, we need a project. Well, we have one, because Workday's hard. Why don't you? take this person data and figure out how to make it more efficient, grab more data, because Workday's SOAP service only allows you to do 1,000 records at a time. We needed all the records, and 1,000 records at the time was going to take hours to get. Well, we gave that problem to them. They came up not one, three solutions. And then they submitted that at the end of the semester, and they won best project for the engineering school. Meetups. We had about five or six meetups. We, did, we started the Columbus Microservices uh, meetup, and that was partnered with WSO2. So we had folks, Samira, Lockmall, Others all come to Columbus, and we didn't just do it for the university, we did it for Columbus. So anyone from Honda, Battelle, they were coming to this thing too. So we were not only sharing what we've done, we were learning what they were doing. So again, success, the small little things you do can breed that um, big impact, especially with your executives. 2021, COVID, right? We hit COVID, and during that time, we reduced our staff. Some people left because of workday, some people got cut, those kind of things happen, and we're remote. But the integration need increased because of COVID. Courses had to be online, so everything just got more and more. Luckily, we already had our integration platform in place. We were able to support with the three of us at the time um, during COVID. And I still did, was able to do talks. I did panels. I did things like that because I was at home. I can work on integrations at night, those, those kind of things. But 
without that platform, imagine dealing with all those integrations I showed in the, the uh, big spaghetti hairball. Now, because of some, some of these wins, we also created a partnership, enterprise architecture partnership, with our medical center um, group. They have their own system, their own team, their own IT as part of Ohio State University. But we can share these things. They're learning from us. They're starting to adopt what we do. So on the comeback. And as I mentioned, I inherited the data warehouse and all that kind of stuff. And now we can conform the team to do similar things like we're doing. It's data pipeline, data engineering, right? You're moving data. It was whether real time, near real time, or day plus old. This is a picture of how we're at the center of almost everything. So you can see the on-prem, we have the clouds, we have departments, we have vendors. This is our footprint, and it just continues to grow. Present data, continual sharing and learning. Shared development, we, we are allowed to train and we do train other departments in creating their own integrations now. We could share it like ballerina. We go out, we train them. If they're willing, they learn it. Now they're maintaining because we have CICD pipelines, we have the code checks, things like that. So we are able to spread that continuous improvement, we started moving our ballerinas to Swan Lake, aligning technologies, as I mentioned, the data engineering team, we're starting to do the same things. Outreach and awareness, again, medical center and other groups and are becoming aware because of the API store and sharing. Where are we going? Well, we are tired, as I said yesterday. <laughs> Maintaining the Kubernetes platform and doing the heavy integration lifts and doing the training, that's a lot of work, especially if you don't have a lot of staff. Let's focus on the, add, the value add, add integrations, things like that. So we're jumping on board, we're going to Corio and we're currently in the implementation right now. We're doing networking, going to our Azure, um, moving our databases, things like that. So we're excited about that. And as I mentioned, Workday and the other integrations, we are allowed to separate Workday and have it perform as good or bad as it does and not impact our other systems. <laughs> so with the cell, uh, and the separate gateways and things like that. That's why we, we want to go to this type of uh, infrastructure. Wrap up. I keep on saying it, small wins, big impact. Don't be afraid to try. We, as a team, we are similar in the mindset in that we aren't afraid to try things. And with WSO2, we were allowed to do that. And the great partnership and learning, we've give and take. We've even introduced a couple of things with uh, WSO2. Enable efficient, secure access through the platform. Keep modern. Engage and empower like-minded people, like yourselves. Continue improvement. Collaborate, innovate, and have fun. That's it.